Well, welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab. Um, here we are. I believe this is probably session 13. We are certainly cruising on now. The plan today is to try and do some rotary glass engraving. First of all, I'm going to use something that we used back in session 8. We're going to use a bitmap and we're going to put it onto a plain white jar. Import of Harry and if you remember the picture comes in huge so we need to zoom out and then in the center there we've got our axis so we can reduce this by grabbing hold of a corner and moving it onto the page still too big to go on the page so now we can come up with the middle magnifying glass to a page size and I want this picture to be about two inches wide 50 millimeters say so we've got handles on here at the moment but I don't know we need to lock the aspect ratio which it is and we'll tr see if we can change this to 50 millimeters and there we go so that sized the picture now sadly we can't use oh we can bitmap handle it's already there that's fine sometimes you have to unclick the handles and put the handles back on but for some reason or other it works differently today we're going to use some of the things that we did in session 8. I'm not going to go through the details of that. If you want to know about that, you can go into session 8. And we're going to use invert color. And we're going to set an output resolution of about 250. And the reason, again, is all explained in session 8. We're going to dither. And we're going to use dot graphic and we're going to apply to the view and that's what we get now I know from session 8 that that's approximately going to work so we're going to apply to source as well OK and if we click on the source we shall find there we go the source has changed as I may have mentioned in an earlier session this green dot that's up the top here is the zero point for our program so that's where the program starts so when I set an origin uh, on the machine it will always go to this point and start the program at this top left hand corner with the rotary we've got an axis that runs across the page like that therefore if we want to print this up and down the jar we need to rotate this through 90 degrees before we put the parameters in first of all let's delete this line because we don't actually need that delete and then we will put a marquee around that and we'll rotate this by minus 90 degrees and we'll move it to about there so we're all ready now to set the parameters so let's go and have a look at this bitmap and see what the parameters are uh, it's a red layer not that, that matters at all we do want a requirement of an output speed. Now, I've set the speed here to 250. That's quite a high speed, but um, I'm going to explain to you in a minute um, a very, very good website to go and look at. Um, and on that website, the guy who's got years of experience at doing engraving of all sorts, including lacing engraving, basically says, hit it fast and hit it hard. And so here we are, 250 millimeters a second. Um, the process mode that we've got is scan. We get no other options. Even though we're using dots on here, it will actually scan um, up and down, or it'll scan across the page as we look at it there. Um, and then we've got power. Now, we don't need number two because we haven't got second laser, but the first one, we'll set it to 9090. Um, it, they're not maximum power, but it's pretty high. Before we turned the picture around, um, we set the resolution in terms of dots per inch, pixels per inch, to 250, which is basically about 0.2 pitch per dot. Now, we're doing dots rather than scan lines, because scan lines will keep the power on all the time, and we're cutting glass. We don't want the power on all the time. We want 
we want to basically fracture the glass with as many small hits as we possibly can. We just want to just destroy the surface, just the very, very surface. We don't really want any heat going into the glass. We don't want to crack the glass itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay with an interval here of about 0.2. So it matches the interval that we've got set the other way. So we now need to save the drawing and the tooling file. Now I want to draw your attention to this website. It's a very good website that explains a lot about the principles of engraving and particular laser engraving on glass. So read this carefully. It's a fantastic article. It's where I went before I even attempted to try and engrave glass. I may even try engraving a bottle at some later stage with some water in it. At the moment I'm just going to engrave uh, an empty jar so that if it does break or shatter in any way at all I've only got to clear up the shards. I haven't got to clear up a whole load of fluid. Well, I'm not going to go through all the details of setting up the rotary table and that because they're all covered in other sessions, uh, particularly session 11 part 1 and 11 part 2 I believe it was. Um, so you can go there and refer to how to set the rotary table up. Um, but what we're going to do is cut basically straight to the chase here and have a go at uh, trying to cut some glass or engrave some glass. What I want to say to you is I've got a piece of dry kitchen roll on here at the moment and that dry kitchen roll is held on with a couple of pieces of masking tape. Now I want to start away from the tape and see where we finish up. Let's just do a frame now and check. Oops, we're going the wrong way. When we turned the image round, it didn't turn the green square round to here. It left the green square up at the top left hand corner. So that was my mistake. So we'll put it there and we'll reset origin. And now we'll do frame again. There we go, we'll do track, enter. Track and, the fr track and frame are the, are the same thing. So oh, it's quite a long picture. So let's try that again. Ooh, just about. And now what I've got here <clears throat> is just some soapy water which I'm going to spray on the kitchen roll which is why I put the tape on the kitchen roll to start with. Right now in addition to that I'm also going to put air on here as well. So I've got several things that are trying to keep the glass cool including the fact that we're running at high speed. So we're ready to run so I need to put the laser on. I should turn some air assist on as well and away we go. And if there's any tendency to flame you can apparently give it another spray of water. So that was a bit of a failure. It sort of marked the surface, but not very well. So we'll start off in a slightly different position and we'll try it. First of all, we'll try it dry this time. Now I need my air assist on just in case I get any things going up into the lens. I don't want anything there. So I'm going to turn a small amount of air on and we'll try a run. Enter. I think as you can see that's certainly better than uh, than when I was doing it with wet paper which was one of the things that was recommended. The jar hasn't cracked, there's no sign of cracking anywhere which is good news. It certainly looks good with the light behind it and we get it out in daylight it doesn't look quite so fantastic but hey ho as I have said several times before these are not tutorials on how to make a professional job these are just how to achieve a result of some sort. This is learning to use the machine. You can spend your own time refining it and trying to make it better. Now certainly you do need to be a little bit careful because there are that feel like shards of glass on here I can feel. I'm just going to use a uh, 
just a straightforward cleaning pad to see if I can take away any of the uh, dangerous bits on the surface. That feels a lot better. And of course now that I've made it wet, <laughs> the frosting effect has completely disappeared.